So you can see here, the little unpacking and updating has gone away. So now we can go ahead and edit the firmware. To do this, we're going to expand the Marlin folder on the left and double click configuration.h. And even though this is for the Ender 3, this layout is the same for all of our firmware versions. So no matter if you're using it on an Anycubic or Creality or Soval, we keep the configuration consistent so you guys know how to use the firmware no matter what printer you're using it for. So like I said, I'm gonna build for an Ender 3. And if all I'm doing is putting this on a stock Ender 3, I can just come over here and get rid of these two forward slashes in front of the defined Ender 3. I'm gonna do a Control S to save. And now I can go ahead and click the little build icon in the bottom left hand corner. At this point, now it's going to actually compile the firmware. So again, depending on the speed of your computer, this can take anywhere from a minute up to five minutes to actually build the firmware. While this is going, you can see there are different printer models listed. And if you scroll down in the configuration file, you can see in most of the configs, there are multiple different printers supported. It's important to note that only compile for one printer at a time. What I typically will do is if I have multiple machines, I'll make multiple copies of that firmware folder and put it in a subfolder with that printer model name. So I know later on that that's the firmware for that particular printer. So I'm gonna let this compile and then we're gonna come back. So now you can see here, the firmware successfully built. You can see at the bottom here, there's a success status. If there's any sort of errors, it'll show up if you scroll up in this window here but for the stock configurations, you're rarely ever gonna get any errors. So I put my SD card into my computer and you can see here we have the SD card open. So I'm going to format this with a FAT32 format with a 4096 allocation unit size. We're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna hit okay. And let's go ahead and open the card. Now there are two ways to get your firmware file. You can do it directly through VS Code here on the left and your file is going to be in the PIO build and then a folder with the processor name and under this you'll see a bin file you're going to want to look for a file with a dot bin extension you can drag this from the vs code window to the sd card directly just like this you can also right click on the cpu folder and hit reveal in file explorer and then double click and you'll also see the bin file now doing it this way is helpful if you have multiple bin files because sometimes you will end up with multiple ones if you're doing multiple compiles and you can sort by date modified and grab the latest one. So whatever the one you last compiled is will have the later date. So at this point, all I need to do is take the SD card out of my computer. I'm going to put it into my printer board, turn it on, and then it will flash. 